Angular 17 introduced deferable views and now in Angular 18 it's a stable feature ready to be used. Hello everyone welcome to my channel. In this video let's understand the concept of deferable views. Deferable views also known as at the rate defer blocks and this is a powerful tool that can be used to reduce the initial bundle size of an Angular application. We can use deferable view concept if we want to load any content or a block of the component on specific condition or event. So let's jump into Visual Studio code to understand defer block concept with an example. So here I'll write deferable views. So one more important thing about defer block is we cannot defer all the components. We can defer only standalone components. So to understand the deferable view concept, I have created a student component that contains a basic table. Let's consider this component to be heavy. Okay, so you can see this is a standalone component. Defer loading standalone component means we are loading component lazily. And standalone component is also introduced in Angular 17. So if we want to use defer loading, then first we have to migrate our application to 17 or the current version of Angular that is 18. Because as I said, we can defer only standalone component. So we will see the different types of blocks available in deferable view. And after that, we will see the different types of triggers. So first I list down the blocks. There are four types of blocks. Like first is defer block. Second is placeholder. Third is loading. And the fourth is error. Okay, so there are four types of blocks available in deferable views and all the blocks are available for the template file. No imports are required. So we will see each block with an example. So first we will see defer. So this defer block wrap the component inside at the rate defer block to load it as a separate piece. And by default, a defer block is triggered when the browser state becomes idle. We will write this defer block like this. And inside that, we need to add the selector of defer blocks. So in this example, we want to lazy load the student component. So I'll copy the selector of student component and I'll paste it here. And in order to use the component, first we need to import that component inside the import array. Import the student component inside TS file and here we are using this. So save the changes and go to the browser. You can see the deferable views is our heading and after that the student information table is coming. That is available inside student component. And by default the defer block is triggered when the browser state becomes idle. So next block we will see the placeholder. The placeholder is an optional block that declares content to show before the defer block is triggered. So here we will use the defer block and after that we will use placeholder. And inside placeholder we will place some content inside paragraph student information table loading. Or we can add the placeholder because this is the placeholder block. Student information table placeholder. Okay. So save the changes and here I'll comment this defer. I'll add the timer inside the placeholder. Here we will add the minimum time. I'll add the 1000 millisecond so that you can easily identify. Once I refresh, you can see the placeholder is coming. Student information table placeholder. And after one second, the table is coming like this. Okay, so third is loading. Loading block is also an optional block that allows us to declare content that will be shown during the loading of any deferred dependency. So here we will add loading, add the image here. And image I'll take from browser, loading image, copy image address. And here I'll add loading here I'll paste the image okay and I'll add the timer here so minimum 
after 1000 millisecond so here you can see once i refresh the page after 1000 millisecond table is getting displayed so instead of image we can add the message also like p loading table like this so you can see the text loading table after 1000 millisecond table is displaying so last is error block this is also the optional block like placeholder and loading block and we can use this error block in case of deferred loading failure and the syntax is error inside that we can add any text message like failed to load the table so the syntax is very simple one more point we can note here the dependencies that are used inside placeholder and loading block they get eagerly loaded so don't select heavy content inside placeholder as well as loading block so this is all about the blocks of deferable view and now we will see when we can trigger this so there are two types of trigger that we have one is when attribute and the other is on attribute so first i'll go with when attribute when is a custom condition and can be defined as a boolean expression so for that i'll create one variable with type boolean is loading boolean false here we will write the syntax at the rate defer inside the bracket we will add trigger so i'll add when trigger with condition is loading so if is loading is true then our student component will load i'll add the loading here loading block loading table student table okay inside loading i'll add the time minimum 1000 millisecond save the changes and go to the browser here nothing is displaying why because the condition is false so i'll make it true and save the changes you can see i'll refresh loading text is displaying loading student table and after 1000 millisecond student table is coming so it will trigger the block when the given condition is true so this is the when attribute now we will see the on attribute so inside on attribute we will see the immediate trigger after that timer trigger after that idle after that viewport and then interaction and last is over so here you can see there are six types of triggers comes under on attribute we will see one by one when immediate trigger will get trigger so this immediate triggers the deferred block immediately as soon as angular has finished rendering so it means it will render once our angular application render onto the browser like defer and we can add the on trigger like on immediate and after that we can add the student component inside defer save the changes so you can see immediate triggers the deferred block immediately as soon as the application rendered so next we will see the timer the syntax for timer is like same instead of immediate we will add timer and inside timer we can specify the time like i will specify 1000 millisecond save the changes and go to the browser here once i refresh it will wait for 1 1000 millisecond and after that table is coming so this timer trigger waits for the specified delay and after that triggers the deferred block so next we will see the idle on idle save the changes and here you can see no change this is the default option it will load the content once the browser is an idle state okay after that viewport interaction and over needs the optional target element we try to choose the target elements and whenever it tries to reach to a viewport the viewport triggered will trigger and other hover and interaction is just like a user interaction with target it will trigger the defer block and the target is a optional parameter the placeholder content is taken as a target so here i'll add defer and on attribute 
with trigger name is viewport and inside that I'll add this student component and, and here as I mentioned this viewport option requires a placeholder so we will add placeholder we'll add the minimum time inside that two seconds inside that we will add loading student table save the changes and go to the browser here you can see after two seconds table is coming this viewport triggers the deferred block when its target element is within the viewport for example when the user scroll down and the block becomes visible so you can add here more content and once you scroll down it will get visible so next we will see the interaction it will trigger when placeholder or a optional target interacted by the user so here we will lazy load the component on a button click okay so for that i'll take one button with name interaction and here i'll add the id interaction button okay and after that i'll add the defer block and inside bracket I'll add on interaction and inside that I need to pass this ID interaction button and after that I'll add the student and here also I'll add the placeholder inside that we will paste this message okay save the changes and go to the browser here here you can see once you click the interaction button then only table will get displayed or else you can see the only placeholder content you can't see the table and once you click on the interaction button you can see the table so the interaction block waits for the user to interact with the placeholder to load the deferred block so we can do this with placeholder as well so i'll comment this and you can see here only placeholder text is coming and once I click on that placeholder the table is coming. I'll refresh and here you can see once I click on to the placeholder then only table is coming. So you can use this interaction trigger on click of button as well as on click of placeholder. Okay so same example we can see with over. So again here I'll add button and the button name is over. And inside that I will pass one ID that is over button and after that I will write the defer block and inside defer block I will write the over trigger and inside over trigger I need to pass the ID of that button. After that we can add the app student component and then I will add the placeholder and inside placeholder I will paste the same message. Save the changes and go to the browser. Here you can see the placeholder text is coming and one button with name over. So once I over over this button, you can see the table is coming. So it will trigger when placeholder or optional target are overed. So here we can lazy load the student component on a over of this button. And again we can implement this with placeholder only. So I'll remove the button. So you can see here once I over onto this placeholder the table will come. You can see. Okay. So we can use this trigger on over of button as well as on over of placeholder. And one more point to note here. We can have a multiple triggers separated by semicolon. And whichever first triggers it will trigger the defer block. So they are created always as an OR condition. So for example here I will take the timer trigger and inside that we will add the 3 seconds. Okay. Save the changes. And here you can see after 3 second table will get displayed. Yes. Like this. But before 3 second if I over the placeholder then also this table will get display. Why? Because it will work like an OR condition. So whichever first triggers it will trigger the defer block. So now you can see once I refresh I will go immediately and over the placeholder. So then it will not wait for 3 seconds because it is getting the first trigger that is over and it will display the table. See.
it is not waiting for 3 seconds and if I am not over it will wait for 3 seconds and then it will display. So this is how we can use the multiple triggers separated by semicolon. So this is all about the triggers as well as blocks of differable views. So what is the advantage of defer block? First, at the rate defer block is to enhance the initial load time of complex web application. And the second advantage is using defer block, Angular application load faster. And if it's a fast moving app, then it will give a better user experience. So we can see the component lazy loading is not a new feature, but this is made easier to implement with deferable views. Also, we can say deferred views is not a new feature, rather it's upgraded the lazy loading concept. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you find any useful information from my channel, then please do like, share and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.